Hello there everyone and welcome to this Biology Mind A-level tutorial on factors affecting cell membrane structure. So in the last lesson we learned about the structure of cell membranes and the fluid mosaic model. We also looked at what the phospholipid bilayer is, how it's responsible for the fluidity of the cell membrane, and that proteins, cholesterol and carbohydrates, such as glycoproteins and glycolipids, are embedded in this membrane. And you now understand the structure and the function of these major components of the cell membrane. So moving on, in this tutorial, we have three key learning objectives to think about. Number one, the effect of temperature on cell membrane structure. Number two, the effect of solvents. And number three, practical investigations into cell membrane permeability. Now, cell membranes are sensitive to temperature. Changes in temperature can affect the fluidity and the permeability of cell membranes, which impacts cell structure and function. So it's important to note that cell membranes are sensitive to temperature. Now we're going to look at how they're sensitive to temperature over the next few slides. So first of all, let's have a think about this graph. So below zero degrees, so let's just scribble out this minus here. This is actually positive and this is a positive. Sorry about that. So below zero degrees, we're looking at this point here. We have an increase in membrane rigidity as fluidity decreases and phospholipids lose much of their kinetic energy. So you get a more rigid membrane. Now, Let's just look at this graph and we have temperature going upwards in this direction on the x-axis and we have permeability also increasing on the y-axis. So that means that this graph is looking at how permeability changes with increases or decreases in temperature. Now we can see that when we go below zero degrees, so this bit of the graph, we're getting an increase in permeability, aren't we? So proteins within the membrane become heavily denatured at lower temperatures. And that's why we get this increased permeability of the membrane, because what's happening is our membrane is getting denatured. So it's getting a bit leaky. There's going to be holes forming because proteins are getting denatured. And really what that means is that there's an increase in membrane permeability because it's more permeable, more things can pass through it if it's leaky. And also what can happen below zero degrees is ice crystals can form in the membrane, causing it to fracture. OK, so now be between zero degrees and 45 degrees, we have a more fluid membrane. Phospholipids can easily move because temperatures are a bit warmer. Now, we say that membranes are semi permeable. So we're looking at this bit, the graph here. And we say, we say that membranes are semi permeable. This is really this is a really important word to remember. And the kinetic energy of the phospholipids increases with this temperature, which increases their movement, making it nice, the membrane nice and fluid and nice and permeable. Now let's think about what happens above 45 degrees. So this is sort of this point up here. Remember, I changed this to a positive 10 and a positive 50 degrees Celsius. So above 45 degrees Celsius, our phospholipid layer begins to break down. Increase in kinetic energy allows the phospholipids to move far away from each other. And this destroys the structural integrity of the membrane, causing it to melt. So essentially at low temperatures and at high temperatures, our membrane is denaturing and causing a more leaky membrane. It's losing its structural integrity. So the membrane becomes freely permeable because, as I said, our proteins are denaturing. This is a really good word to remember. They, they are unable to regulate what gets into and out of the cells because they're becoming more permeable and the membrane might burst. The heat causes water inside of the cells to expand, which puts pressure on the membrane, which can lead to it bursting. So you can see that with heat, our lovely phospholipid bilayer is going from a gel-like consistency to a fluid-like consistency. Now let's think about our effect of solvents on cell membranes. So solvents such as ethanol increase membrane permeability. So let's have a look at this graph here. On our x-axis, we have our alcohol concentration. On our y-axis, we have our membrane permeability. 
as we increase alcohol concentration, we can see we're increasing our permeability. Nice and self-explanatory. And that's exactly how you should describe a graph in your exam. What the x-axis is, what the y-axis is, and what that trend is. So lipids dissolve in alcohol. Therefore, the phospholipids, which remember are lipids, in a cell membrane, which will easily dissolve in solutions such as ethanol. And as a result, the cell membrane becomes more fluid and permeable as it starts to break down. Now, the effect on membrane permeability depends on the solvent type. Certain types of solvent can cause a greater degree of membrane permeability than others. For example, ethanol causes greater membrane permeability than methanol. Now, solvent concentration and membrane permeability are directly correlated. So all this means is that as we increase, directly correlated just means that as we increase one variable, so our solvent concentration, we're also increasing the other variable, our membrane permeability. And we can see that in this graph as well. As our membrane permeability increases, sorry, as our alcohol concentration increases, so does our membrane permeability. So both are increasing. And this is because as the solvent becomes more and more concentrated, it has a greater ability to dissolve phospholipids and disrupt the membrane structure. Now, we can design investigations to see exactly how factors such as temperature, solvent type and solvent concentration affect membrane permeability. This experiment is typically done with beetroot, and you'll probably do this in class, which is a highly pigmented vegetable. It's nice and red, isn't it? Ready, purpley. And as the cell membranes of the beetroot cells become disrupted and more permeable, the coloured pigment le leaks out. And we can measure the amount of coloured pigment that leaks out and quantify the degree of cell membrane permeability. So we'll talk through this now. So first of all, we cut beetroot into five equal sized pieces. This is important because this is a variable we need to control. This is one of our controlled variables here. And we wash these pieces afterwards to remove any pigment that leaked out while cutting. Meanwhile, we pipette five centimetres cubed of water into five different test tubes. And we prepare water baths at five different temperatures, so 20 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius. Now, remember, we want to keep our pieces nice and equal so that that variable is nice and constant. We're not changing it between our experiments. Now, I'm sure you can tell me what comes next. So we place each test tube in the different water baths, depending on what temperature they're correlated to, and we incubate them again for the same duration, another variable that we want to control and keep constant across our experiments. We then remove the test tubes from the water baths and we carefully remove the beetroot pieces, leaving the remaining coloured liquid in the test tubes. And we use a colorimeter to measure light absorbance in each test tube. So the idea is the greater the absorbance, the more coloured or opaque the liquid in the test tube is. So there's a greater degree of permeability within the beetroot cell membranes, resulting in a large amount of pigment leaking out. And sorry, just to explain that, you can see that here. So these are varying temperatures. And as you can imagine, as we increase temperature, we're going to get increased leakage of our pigment out. Because remember, we said that as we increase our temperature, we're going to increase that permeability of our membrane. We're going to denature those proteins. OK, so we've had a look at how we can investigate the effect of temperature. Now, maybe if you're feeling keen, you can have a think yourself about how you can investigate the effect of solvents on um, different concentrations of solvents or solvents themselves, different solvents on our cell membrane structure. So you can pause the video at this point if you'd like and have a think to yourself about how you do, do that. Equally, if you feel like just listening to me telling you, then just continue watching and we'll go on to that next slide now. So investigating the effect of different solvents, again, cut and wash five equal sized pieces of beetroot. Really important to emphasise that they're equal sized and you must write that in your exam if you ever write about this experiment. Again, you're preparing your five different test tubes, each again with 
five centimetres cubed exactly across all test tubes of the following concentration of solvents. So 10%, 30%, 50%, and 70% of ethanol. We then put each piece of beetroot into the different test tubes. Now we leave those beetroot pieces submerged for an hour. We periodically shake the tubes and after an hour, we remove the beetroot pieces. Again, we use a colorimeter to measure light absorbance by the liquid from each test tube. And have a think about what we're looking for here. We're looking for as the concentration of solvent increases for the membrane permeability to increase and therefore for our result on our colorimeter to show higher absorbance. So as a little tip, you can repeat this experiment with three test tubes containing water, ethanol and methanol to investigate the effects of different solvent type on cell membrane permeability. Because remember our previous experiment was looking at different solvent concentrations on cell membrane permeability. All right, so that's us done for today. I hope that all made sense and I'll see you for our next tutorial. Well done.